So welcome to the third part of our, our lecture today on eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Um, what we want to talk about is kind of like an eigenspace, because that's kind of our goal here. But let me just kind of do a little quick recap, kind of based upon the example that we just did. So lambda is going to be an eigenvalue if and only if you look at the matrix A minus lambda times the identity matrix of size n times, e, times the vector x equals to zero, so you have a homogeneous system of linear equations, has a non-trivial solution. So deciding whether something has an eigenvalue is deciding whether this particular matrix has a non-trivial solution. And the reason for that is basically you just do what I, my argument here, you just have to notice that if you have a n by n matrix, then instead of multiplying by i2, you would multiply by i n. So you would have matrices of the same size uh, on both sides. Okay, so you have here a matrix and we're looking at a non-trivial solution, right? So that's what I have here. So A minus lambda I N is a matrix. So we can actually use a lot of our matrix language and we're looking at solutions to this. But looking to solution to that, because you're looking at the homogeneous solution really means that you're looking at the null space of our matrix. Okay, so you're looking at the matrix A minus lambda I N, and this is going to be all the set X such that A minus lambda I N times X is equal to zero. So you can think that what you're doing is you don't, uh, you can change the lambda. So you fix your A and you're letting the lambda change. And as you ch let the lambda change, you're changing this set right here. And what you're looking for is when you change the lambda, when does the set suddenly get a non-zero element inside of that? And whenever you get a non-zero element inside of this set, you found an eigenvalue, okay? So let me just kind of recap. Thus, lambda is an eigenvalue if and only if the null space of this matrix it strictly contains the zero vector, okay? So it contains more than zero. We'll always have the zero, but it contains more than zero. But using our notion of dimension, this means that the dimension of the null space of my matrix has to be at least one, greater than or equal to one. And another way of thinking about this is that a minus lambda i n has a free variable. So when you look at the matrix A minus lambda i n, you get a free variable when you put it into row reduced echelon form. So these are alternative ways of thinking about what an eigenvalue is doing. Okay. And so because this is important, we're gonna actually give a name to this set. Okay, so the null space of this matrix A minus lambda I N is called the eigenspace of A, is the eigenspace of A corresponding to the I, uh, eigenvalue lambda. So it's the eigenspace. So it contains all the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda, and it also contains one more vector. It contains the zero vector, because this is a key thing to remember when we're defining the eigenvalue. Let's go right back to the definition is that an eigenvector has to be a non-zero vector. So the zero vector always satisfies this equation. If I put zero in for x, I'm okay. I get a true, true statement, but I'm looking for the non-zero values. So the eigenspace of an eigenvalue contains the zero, but it also contains all the things that we're interested in. And using the language from of subspaces and vector spaces, what we get is that the null space of A minus lambda I N, well, is a subspace of the bigger space R N, right? And this is immediately clear from all the work in chapter four is because the null space of a matrix is always a subspace, okay? So the set of uh, eigenvectors is going to form a, a vector space, okay? So that's, that's quite interesting. And also we get that the dimension 
of the null space, we can compute that, is simply going to be equal to the number of free variables in the matrix A minus lambda I N. And again, we're just using the fact that we know that the dimension of the null space of the matrix is simply the number of free variables inside of it. Okay. So this is kind of, we're starting to see um, why uh, all this language of vector spaces now suddenly comes in handy. We have talk about eigenspaces. It's a vector space containing all the eigenvectors. And what I want to do is in the next part is talk about why care about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay. And so the first thing that we're going to talk about is we're going to link the notion of whether the matrix is invertible or not to some of the eigenvalues of our matrix. So that's some of the things that the eigenvalues are measuring. So I'm going to pause here and then when we come back, I'll actually write out what the condition is here. I want to give you a chance to think about it and then we'll walk through the proof and then we'll give some other properties of eigenvalues and eigenvectors.